Hey booktube, Chelsea the Reading Outlaw here to do a horror movie chat with you guys. Um, if you guys watched my announcement video, I will link it down below and in a box uh, up here for you guys if you haven't seen it yet. I basically just kind of outlined my plans to watch 30 horror movies in 30 days before Halloween. And this is the first round of updates. I said in that video that I was going to do them in batches of five because I'm bad at math. And if I only did them in batches of five, I'd be making wrap-up videos for this series like more into November than I want to go. So I actually have the first seven movies today to talk about that I watched. Um, they may not be the most like even batches but I'll kind of try and do some pre-planning and link down below or leave a list down below of what is going to be in my next wrap-up or at least what the next chunk of videos is going to be so that you can watch along with me or if you also have feelings about a particular video you can come back. But yeah today we are going to talk about the first seven titles on my list which are The Invasion of the Body Snatchers, Psycho, Night of the Living Dead, The Exorcist, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Halloween, and The Nightmare on Elm Street. They, these movies span the years from 1956 all the way up until the 70s, mid, late 70s, I want to say, is when Nightmare on Elm Street came out, maybe early 80s. I don't actually have the dates written down on my note sheet. That's in my other journal, of course. Um, but yeah, so it spans a good like 20 to 30 year time block and gives us some really interesting developments. I'm going to do super, super quick summaries for you guys, just in case you guys haven't seen the movies, so you have a somewhat of a basis for some of the things that I've noticed. Invasion of the Body Snatchers takes place in small town California, where scientists fear a large amount of nuclear radiation has actually caused shifts in the local population, but it is an alien invasion leaving pods behind that replicate and mimic the people in the town, leaving them with these like cardboard husk shells of themselves. Then you have Psycho, which we probably all know about just from its general cultural influence, but young blonde Janet Lee embezzles some money from her company and then goes on the run. She ends up staying overnight at the hotel of Norman Bates, who is a man with a voyeur kink and some mommy issues to say the least. After that, we went ahead to Night of the Living Dead. This is a zombie flick. This is a movie in which um, a brother and sister while visiting a grave are attacked by a, a an uprisen corpse, basically. This is a George Romero movie. It is also one of the first instances of like zombie films that I was able to actually get my hands on in any capacity. It's also one of the only horror movies that has a star that's a person of color which I was very surprised to see. One of the main men in this movie is a man of color, which was a little shocking, especially given the historical context. After that, we move on to The Exorcist, which is a story that we probably all have heard about. Again, it reached its tentacles out into the culture. There's lots of stories about the reactions of people in theaters, people being hospitalized and having strokes after seeing this movie. This is, of course, the story of Linda Blair, Reagan, who is possessed by the devil as her actress mother seeks first medical and then spiritual help. There are so many iconic scenes and lines that come from this movie. It's actually one of my favorites. I've seen it so many times. After that came the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which was kind of what I consider the beginning of my like teen slasher flicks. A group of teens in a car on a road trip break down and go to seek help from a farmhouse with a family that is creepy in all different kinds of ways. We also are introduced to Leatherface, who is a serial killer who looks to replace his own disfigurement with actual human skin. Uh, after that, we have Halloween. Uh, this is the movie that launched Jamie Lee Curtis and also began what I like to think of as the teen virginity trope in which non-virgin or slutty teens very, very quickly meet their demise. And then after that, the last one I'm going to talk about is The Nightmare on Elm Street. This is Freddy Krueger's movie, if that is actually more helpful to you than hearing the title, in which a small town in California, yet again, is haunted by the legacy of a pedophile that the town worked together to murder, who has now come back to wreak his revenge upon the town by invading the dreams of teenagers and murdering all of them. So yeah, there's lots of different kind of scope of context in the course of these movies. I know that I'm not necessarily saying anything that's going to be brand spanking new here. These are just the lessons that stick out to me on the surface, the first of which being the rise and the predominance of teenagers. Almost all of these movies focus exclusively on a white middle class existence and the fears of white middle class that are uh, validated by the encroaching of the other whether that be a literal other in the terms of replaced fellow townsmen or a spiritual other in the term in the form of the devil or the societal other in the terms of um, pedophiles and mass murders that we 
were like worthily ostracized from our towns who then come back to wreck their revenge. There's a lot of different iterations of that, but what I think is interesting is that as the movies progress, we see that battle going from taking place on an adult battlefield and between adults to one involving teenagers. This is something that I think shifts with the times. I don't think it's any coincidence that the rise in um, Reaganism economics and the boom bust economic cycle in the late 70s and early 80s has to do with this predominance of focusing more on teenagers and teenage consumerism and teenage problems than it does in contextualizing things in a more adult realm. But given these seven specific movies, which granted are not like, you know, we would not call this a scientifically like significant sample size, but we're working with what we have. And it's just something that I definitely noticed. Uh, I've already mentioned, but I thought it was incredibly striking given the time and the historical context to see Night of the Living Dead led by a man of color. I know that a lot of my 2017 and 2018 picks have more people of color in them, but not only was he a man of color, he survived the movie there well the largest portion of the movie and he wasn't I felt tokenized or racialized in any way that was particularly offensive um take that with a grain of salt because there are going to be probably microaggressions of which I'm unaware and blind to but from what I saw and took notes on there wasn't anything particularly egregious I also just think it's really interesting to see which scenes from which movies have become cultural impressions and are actually taken from the movie itself as opposed to something that starts in the movie and then is subtly adapted and twisted and transformed over time through the fan culture and through the general pop culture media into something that's the same but a little different. I just think that it's really, really interesting. So those are just kind of some of my very brief thoughts on the first seven horror movies that I've been able to watch in terms of like my scare factor. Um, none of these movies are particularly scary to me. I still think the scariest one is probably The Invasion of the Body Snatchers just because conceptually and intellectually the idea of your neighbors being slowly replaced with um, completely compliant and non-individualistic versions of themselves and it's one of those like creeping fears that's impossible to stop until it's too late there's a lot to unpack in a fear like that and so that is one that sticks out the strongest to me as opposed to something like um mass murderers or freddy krueger or you know fred we get our freddy our jason and our leather face in this round so we kind of start that cycle of teen slasher flicks so invasion of the body snatchers the exorcist the exorcist was one of those movies that i saw because my mom was like it's one of the scariest movies of all time and i was like i have to see that then uh and i really really enjoy it there are definitely jump scares in it that i think are frightening but it's another one that i think operates most terrifyingly on like a conceptual level but yeah not a ton of like scare scary movies to me in this particular batch i would love to know if you've seen them and what you thought um, thank you for coming and listening to my, I'm sure, mostly incoherent and not exactly novel ideas about the movies that I've seen. Come back in another week and we will talk about the next batch of films. And until next time, friends, take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and have happy reading. Bye.